Hi, this is Sage Kimball, and I'm the Mad Stamper. I'm the creator of Stamping Madly, where we provide creative coaching and training for paper crafters, card makers, and scrapbookers, as well as the finest paper crafting supplies available. Today I have a digital technique to share with you. I'm going to show you how to color the Tweet Leaves image with several different colors in my digital studio. I love this new feature in MDS2 and think you'll have fun with it too. You'll open up a whole new world of possibilities in your digital creations with the Stamp Image Coloring Tool. I've opened up a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card and added the Tweet Leaves stamp. It starts out black, but that's really easy to change. One way to do that is first you have to select the stamp by clicking on it, and that will show you these four squares around the outside of the image. Then you go over to the Design Center, and you can see that my digital studio has recognized that you're working with a stamp. And all of the buttons in this stamp section are active. So to change the color of the entire stamp, there's a button here called Change Color. You click on that and click whatever color you'd like the whole thing to be. I'll just choose More Mustard for an example. And then click OK. And there it is in a totally new color. But today we're going to try something different. So I'm going to change this back to Basic Black Then I'm going to double click on the image and that brings up this stamp image coloring screen. The first thing I like to do is make the image larger so that it's easier to work with. So I come down here to the bottom left to the zoom and click on it until I'm comfortable with the size of the images that I'm going to be working on. And then there are sliders on the right side to move up and down on the image, and there's a slider at the bottom to move from left to right. The other tool that's really helpful is the brush size, and that's on the left in the middle here. When I'm working on an image with a lot of detail, I like to make the brush size small. So when I'm trying to color something with that's very small and very close to another image, I've got a small brush that I can do that with. I have more control. So I set it to 10 when I'm going to do a lot of detail. The default is 15, and that works really well for most um, images, unless it's really large, and then you can make it whatever size you're comfortable working with. OK, so let's get started. I'm going to choose Midnight Muse for coloring the bird and I'm going to center the bird in the center using my slider. And you can see over here on the left, it says brush color, and it will show you in this square what color you're working with. And I want the um, brush fairly large for the bird because I want to cover a lot of area at once. In order to color, you put your brush over the part of the image you want to color and use your left click button, hold it down while you move the cursor with your mouse. And it's, you don't have to be too careful to stay in the lines because if you stray outside into the white background, the background won't pick up any of your color. But if you stray down into another area of stamp, you can see it gets colored with whatever you're working with. And that may not be what you want. So I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a minute. Now that the bird is all blue, I want to color his beak. So I'm going to change the color to more mustard down here on my palette. And you can see it shows up as the brush color. Then, because the beak is very small, I'm going to change the brush size to 10. Then I can very carefully color in his beak. Now I want to color his eye, so I need to change back to basic black. 
and I'm going to set my brush size so that it's about the same size as his eye. Then I hold the cursor in place, click once, and now his eye is black. Now he's looking pretty good. It, I see a little tiny area here where the, um, the more mustard is showing. So to change that, I'm going to go to a really small brush size again. See if I can zoom in a little more and I'm going to clean up the edges just by adding Midnight Muse right along these areas that have a different color. And then I'll have to go back to more mustard and clean up the edge of his beak. Now I'm going to work on this branch. I'm going to color it with Early Espresso. So I select that from the palette. And with a fairly large brush, I can go in and do most of the coloring. When I get to the bird legs, I'm going to make the brush smaller so I can get right up next to his blue belly and where there's not a lot of room between the branch and his tail and the leaf underneath here I'm going to use the small brush too. So being able to change the to adjust the brush size really makes this easier and you can be a lot more accurate. The next thing I'm going to do is select Always Artichoke and I can use a pretty good sized brush here and color this leaf. And you can see I just have to go over the whole area. I don't have to worry about much detail on a part like this. Then I'll take some cherry cobbler and I'll do the same thing with this leaf image here. Up here I want to show you how I colored this branch of berries. I'm going to start with Early Espresso again and a pretty good brush size. I'll go to 15 and I'm just going to color over the whole thing with Early Espresso. If I get the berries it's fine. I'll go back and color them with Cherry Cobbler just like I did with Bird's Eye and Black. So now that the branch is all early espresso, I come down and choose Cherry Cobbler from the palette. And I then am going to make my brush size be exactly the size of the berries. That looks good. And then place the brush over the berry, click once, and it turns it to Cherry Cobbler. I'm going to go through and color the rest of the leaves with various colors and I'll show you what I've done when I'm finished with that. So here's the finished image with all the coloring and I'll just point out the colors that I've used. The leaves that look like this are done with summer star fruit. Gumball green I used on these two leaves. This is Bravo Burgundy, as is this one over here. I've used Cajun Craze on these leaves. These two leaves in this shape are done with Poppy Parade. And that's one of the things I love about my digital studio is that I get to use the old retired colors that I no longer have in my studio. And I've 
repeated the Cajun craze on this large leaf here and some more cherry cobbler up here. I had wanted to use the autumn accents die to cut this image out once I print it, but the die cut is the reverse of the image that's on the screen. So to fix that, you just go over to the design center again, and there's another button that says mirror and click on that and magically it's the other direction. So there you have it. Coloring stamp images with several colors is really a simple process and the results are well worth the effort. Here are the hybrid cards I made after cutting out the printed image and using it with various cardstock and embellishments. I hope you'll be inspired to try it yourself with Tweet Leaves or any other stamp in your My Digital Studio library. For more inspiration and instruction, be sure to visit me at www.stampingmadly.com and the Stamping Madly Facebook page. If you need to order My Digital Studio software or content, you can do so through either of these pages. Of course, you can order traditional paper crafting supplies and tools there as well. This is Sage Kimball, a.k.a. The Mad Stamper, and I'll see you soon.